it's quite interesting because the sellers, again, a lot of them are expecting to go into multiple offers. A lot of them are expecting to um, just kind of throw a number out there and they get it. I have seen a fair share of gum throwing going on, um, which means that just they're just kind of pulling numbers out. Um, the first thing that I do with my with my seller clients is I, I counsel them through you know, where we, we are on the market, I do these market momentum reports. So I, I, I really keep um, a very firm pulse on, on really what's going on in the market. And I have made adjustments for COVID. You know, I mean, it's, it's, the market has increased, but I've kept it um, in, a, in a realistic realm. And I have these conversations with my clients and we sit down and I, I had a listing in Red Hook that um, without COVID, it would have listed between 449 and 469. It was it was a 1840 classic colonial on eight bucolic acres, but it needed a lot of work and restoration. It had an in-ground pool, hadn't been used in five years, but at a minimum there was a hole, um, which again is coveted right now. Pools and private settings and bucolic settings, it, that that's checking a lot of boxes and I knew it. And I explained that to my client at the same time, it needed a, a great deal of restoration and, and repair. Um, so all that considered, pre-COVID, it would have been, again, 449 to 469. With COVID, I gave her a range. I gave her a range of 489, and I told her top 539 that, that, that may still get some multiple offers. But I said, that's your, that's your range. And I explained to her uh, the importance of coming out at a, good, at, a, at a good fair market value price. And basically, if it's going to go over, the, 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 the buyer's are willing to climb the ladder against each other and increase that price. But what I've found with buyers coming up is that they do not want to feel gouged in the middle of a pandemic. They will walk even from tight inventory. They will walk before being gouged in the middle of a pandemic. And I explain this to my sellers and I explain the marketing strategy, which marketing strategy for each listing is different. It, it, it's every house is different, but we go through the marketing strategy. We go through the pricing strategy, they truly work hand in hand. You can have, you can lead a horse to water with great marketing, but if you're not priced right, they're going to walk. If you're priced right, but you're not marketing to your audience, you're not getting your, you're not getting your people. So it's this marriage between the two that really does work together to get you what you want. And with that particular house, I mean, we ended up listing that for 489. We used a different strategy when it came to um, showings. I, I, it was, I, I accompanied all showings. We had over 50 in the course of a week. It was mayhem. I was asked after the first weekend, do you have offers? Do you have offers? I spoke with my client and I said, you know what? Let's handle this differently. Let's let people have the time to breathe and actually appropriately consider their home purchase. Bring back contractors, bring back to inspectors, do whatever you want to do. But we gave buyers a week to actually be able to do what they needed and submit thoughtful um, an appropriate solid offers. My client got nine um, and we ended up accepting a $700,000 cash deal on that house. So that is a really good testament to the fact that you don't have to put buyers in a corner um, and make them feel this, give me an offer at the table frenzy in order to do right by your clients. Um, it, this worked very well for that client. I have other clients where within a few days, you know that you've got your buyer. You've just, you've got the, you've got the solid financing for them. A lot of this involves counseling. I have one client who accepted actually less than the top um, because we went through the buyers and the buyer that was actually offering the most was really coming across as a shiny nickel. And the big thing is to, you do want them to see the closing table. So there's a lot of counseling that goes on with your clients during this process. And you're looking at the buyers, especially when you're in these multiple offer situations, you get somebody who, a seller who all of a sudden has a number in their head now, that's not realistic. A buyer walks away three days later, they get cold feet. They try to negotiate harder off the inspection than what the, the seller had expected. Now, all of a sudden the seller's back on the market and they have this number in their head that may not have been realistic in the first place. So there's there's a there really is um, quite a bit that goes into this from the seller and the buyer perspective. I counsel my buyers differently when we're going into a multiple offer situation, but I I always give them what that you know where it really should be from a comp perspective, and then I will say to them you know if you're going to go over this. Um, 
that's your call, but I, you know, I don't want you to be mad at me a year from now or whatever, if uh, prices adjust and, and all of a sudden, you know, I don't want you to feel like, you know, you didn't do right. And so there's, there's counseling again, that's, that's going on both ways through the entire process. There just, there is, it's definitely, uh, it's not just an open the door type of job, no doubt.